Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another session of OLC 40 Term 1B. Today is December 16th, 2022. I'm your instructor, Mike Laverty. This is class number 20. We are officially on to unit number three, and today's uh, we'll cover lesson 11, and I'm hoping we can get through assignments 30, 31, and 32. So we are in week five of classes. There'll be a week of classes next week, and then we'll take a break. So we'll have our two-week holiday break, where there will be no broadcasts. And then January 26th will be our last day of broadcasting. That'll be the last course, number 36. So, uh, weeks four and five covered unit two. So, we've got unit one taken care of, unit two is taken care of. Now, for the final weeks, uh, six, seven, eight, and nine, we have, so that there'll be four more weeks in this course, in which time we'll covers, we will cover units three and four, and then we'll help you prepare for the final exam or you'll do a course culminating activity. So depending on the situation in your community, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, you know, to write an exam, you have to have someone invigilate it for you, which just means they have to watch you as you write the exam. And if, a, in, if a, an exam can't be arranged for you, then you will do this course culminating activity which is like a, uh, a long assignment. Uh, it's a four-part assignment that you'll complete on your own time, hand that in, and then you're done. So if you're uh, tuning in live, then you know how to do at least one of these methods, but if you're watching on YouTube, you can pause the screen, and from Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 10.55 Central Time, you can listen or watch live. Today's broadcast is a little bit different because we're broadcasting on a Friday afternoon, but that is only because I was sick on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, which threw off the week. So search me up on YouTube and have a look under my playlist. So starting today, you'll see there'll be a Unit 1 playlist, a unit two playlist and now a unit three playlist. And there's also one playlist called Term 1B that has all the videos. So depending on what you need, you can just pick a playlist or just look through all the videos, whatever works best for you. But I, I try to organize them so you're not wasting time looking for stuff. It's just there for you. So I am starting to see a lot more work come in, the, especially the last couple of days. So that's great. So. Um, I've got four or five new students to have a look at, so I'm always excited when I see new student work come in, and it's really important to get your work to me so I can uh, have a look at it, give you some feedback. So get your work to myself or your DEC, get that to your learning center, and if you don't know how to submit your work, reach out to someone, ask them. But up on the screen there, there's many ways that you can send work in, and you can uh, reach me directly. I'm probably the most responsive through this email address right here. But, of course, if you want to email me, add me as a friend on Facebook, send me a message, or give me a call at one of those two numbers below, that'd be awesome, and I can help you out. This is the best time to phone me, aside from the two-week Christmas break, which I will not be available. But if you want to get in touch with me next week, then you can do that Monday through Friday, 9 till 3. And here's where you should be. You should definitely have made contact with me in some shape or form. You should have read all the pages of Unit 1 and Unit 2. So you should have read those two units and, you know, make a plan, you know, for starting on the third unit. You should have completed assignments 1 through 26 and make a plan for finishing off Unit 2. All right, so we'll do a word of the day. We'll do a headline. And hopefully we'll get to three assignments. 
Our learning goals for today are to look at visual elements such as maps, graphs, etc. and to review how writers choose their subject, audience, and purpose. And we'll know we're successful if we can use our understanding of visuals to complete assignments 30 and 31 and if we can choose the appropriate subject, audience, and purpose to complete assignment 32. All right, so up on the screen, we have a visualization. So it's a visual element. So what you're looking at here um, is another example of an infographic. Um, or sometimes they call this a data visualization. Um, another, another key concept I want to explore today is the concept of big data. So big data is when you have a whole bunch of information and it's a lot to deal with and then you have to find really creative ways to uh, organize it, how to group it all together and how to share it with people. So what you're looking at here is uh, um, they call this a word cloud and it, it's similar to the infographic I put up earlier um, about the uh, the most used emoticons in the English language so in this one the bigger the word is the more often it's used right so the bigger the word the more times that word has come up so you know issue comes up a lot less than the word failed uh, horrible comes up a lot more than the word well so you can see the difference between those two um, you know terrible comes up a lot more than help so we know that customer service was used a lot horrible was used a lot customers failed was used a lot but we need some context we need uh, we need to explain this so so what this is it's uh it's 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 from a website and and they're talking about a retailer so someone who is selling stuff uh online and this is the comment they get this is their social comment so this is the comments they're getting on Facebook and Twitter and maybe even TikTok and Instagram so the big data is everything that people are saying about the company. So one person might say, guys, if you haven't bought Christmas presents yet, go to, you know, go to this store. Another customer says, I hate New Year's time. I've never seen lines that long. I wasted an hour at their store and the staff was rude. I hate this place. The third customer says on Instagram, look what a gorgeous reindeer sweater I bought at this store, right? So it's everything people are saying about the company. The company's customer base is 20 plus million people. So it'd be impossible for them to, to look at all the comments. So even if somebody's full-time job was to read all the comments, they couldn't do it. So what they do is they get a machine that automates it and gives it some kind of an analysis, right? And that's, that's what we call the big data, the big data visualization, right? So uh, word clouds tell us you know, how often a word comes up, so hate awful, terrible, failed, and the like. So um, so if you own this company and you see this word cloud, you know, the fact that failed is so big is going to be a concern. Why is that word coming up so much? You know, why is the word horrible coming up so much and fail, right? And uh, what's some other bad ones, right? So, and then you've got happy. You know, why is happy so small? And why is delighted so small, right? So it, it gives you a nice, easy visualization. Um, and if you understand the context of that image, you don't need a lot of explanation. You can just look at it and you can see problems. And if you're really smart and if you have a lot of experience, you could probably think of like some solutions you might want to put in place to figure that problem out. So we've got uh, two words of the day, um, one of them in Anishinaabe Moen and one of them in English. So we have, uh, uh, and again, I hope I get the pronunciation right, um, uh, Asige Bigan, which is a number, or it could also refer to a calculator. Uh, 
and of course the English word is data so they're not the same word but they're similar and data is uh, individual facts statistics or items of information so data is actually plural it's a whole bunch of information uh, datum is the uh, that's the singular version right so one piece of data is a datum and data usually refers to like a, a collection of facts stats or items of information right and we often talk about data sets so if you want to do a if you want to like chart the average temperature in your hometown or you know like how much rainfall you get right you'd have to collect a data set so like how many centimeters for each day uh, the temperature uh, in the morning for 30 days in a row and then get your average right so that's how that works here's another data set so this is um, number of customers who like the product so again these huge circles are a hundred thousand plus fifty thousand plus for the then the smaller the circle gets so um, and so these data sets are meant to look at something and in a second you can just glance at it and get a whole bunch of information right so it's you know again it's the whole picture is worth a thousand words thing right so a lot of information a lot of information you know put into one image right that's what you're looking at right so it's a whole bunch of information that just gets put in one image and you can just have a, a look at it and gain a whole lot of information from it um, and then we, and we, d we see a couple of more words up here so he or she writes numbers adds things up tallies up uh, add it together and then again if you look at that um, ASIG uh, prefix um, you know which has to do with numbers and counting so even if you don't speak a language the more you study a language you can start to see the patterns and you know most languages around the globe uh, follow that pattern where um, you know it's just it's just you're just building up different words and once you get to know the the building blocks it, you really start to learn that language a lot faster in English I got a couple of words up on the board we got visuals which of course a uh, one definition um, you know this is just one definition the uh, visuals has more than one but one definition is you know photos slides films charts other visual inf material usually used for illustration or promotion from the Latin videre which means to see right and interestingly enough uh, people used to actually think that like your eyeball your eyeball would like your eyeball would shoot out um, would shoot out a beam of like I don't know electricity or something and then you would like see stuff with it right that's how they believe that would work your eyeballs would shoot out little rays of light and then you would see the world around you so that's th where that word comes from and then big data is data sets uh, and they typically consist of billions even trillions of records that are so vast and so big and complicated that they require new and powerful computational resources to process and of course datum is from the latin and it means something that is given So here's our article of the day. Ukraine's ex-Laker Slava Medvet Medvenko, Medven Medvenenko sold off championship rings to help Kiev teens play basketball. Right? So you got this uh, basketball player, used to play for the uh, LA Lakers, and now he sold off his championship ring so he can help his uh, a sports team uh, play basketball. In, in his in his home country of the Ukraine and there he is right here and we don't see any rings on those fingers so I wonder if he's already sold them so there's our headline have a look at that nouns in blue adjectives in orange verbs in green prepositions in red and we can circle the adjective noun combos 
because they always go together. So we don't just have, you know, we have Kiev teens. Kiev or Kiev was what it used to be called. They are teenagers who are from Kiev. So Kiev is the adjective. Teens is the noun. Uh, same right here. They're not just they're not just any kind of rings. They are championship rings. Uh, it's not just uh, Slavka Medven Medved Medvedenko. He's an ex Laker. Uh, Ukraines. We have the apostrophe f's. So it's something that belongs to the Ukraine. And what belongs to the Ukraine? Our friend Slava, the guy who's making the donations. And what did he do? He sold his rings to help people play basketball. And the words off and to are my prepositions. The words that show relationships to things. So to, off, under, during, while. Prepositions show us where something is or when it's happening, usually. So here's a breakdown of the article. We've got the first three paragraphs, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break those down for us, okay? So, in a large basketball auditorium in Kiev, on a dark December evening, a group of teenagers make their way up and down a court lit only by headlamps and the odd smartphone flashlight. So this is great, this last one. Those details are great, right? And the two... The two words I repeat over and over again in this course is be specific, right? So we have smartphones lighting up the way. We've got people wearing headlamps. So it's the writers in, a, in just a few amount of words has painted a really good picture here. Um, and so, um, you know, if we just cut this middle part out, we could read in a large basketball auditorium in Kiev, a group of teenagers make their way. So we could read that sentence. Um, we could read that sentence all the way through, but they've added this prepositional phrase. It's a prepositional phrase because the word "on" is a preposition. So, on a dark December evening, we don't have to know that it's a dark December evening. It's um, it's giving us additional information, but I would say that it's 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 relevant, and it helps to paint the picture, right? You know it's December, you know it's cold, and you'll notice that um, you've got a comma here and a comma here, and that's what commas do. They're, they're probably the most useful piece of punctuation, and if you want to be a, a good writer, you really have to focus on your use of commas and learn how to use them. And then what they do is they chunk your writing up into clauses and phrases. So that's what good writing really comes down to, is just chunking up your writing, dividing up your writing into little parts. And then you have to know how the parts go together, right? So um, that's a good example of how you can use commas to break up your writing. Um, and so as the reader, the first thing you picture is a large basketball auditorium. So you picture a big basketball facility. Then you picture a dark December evening. So now picture that arena in, in a dark December night. And then now, once you've got that picture in your mind, now you picture a bunch of teenagers making their way up and down a court lit only by headlamps and the odd smartphone flashlight. So they don't have electricity, they don't have power, but they still want to play basketball. The players have become accustomed to blackouts. The result of waves of Russian shelling and missile barrages targeting Ukraine's civilian energy infrastructure. So again, um, independent clause. You know, this can this can be what we call a standalone sentence. I could put a comma. Or I could put a period right here. The players have become accustomed to blackouts. We've got a subject. My players and have become accustomed. That's a, that's a verb phrase. Two blackouts, right? So that could be its own sentence, but the writer of the article has put 
um, a comma in there, and they've added this noun phrase, right? And the noun phrase tells us more about blackouts, right? So all of those extra words are just telling us more about the blackouts, right? So we've seen this example several times from these writers of these news reports. Y you say something, and then you want to say more about it. You put a comma, and then you say more about that thing, right? So we know these blackouts. They're not just blackouts. They're blackouts that have been caused by um, the, the Russian army is targeting the Ukraine power infrastructure, right? So they're, they're, they're identifying how the Ukrainian people make energy, and then they're bombing those facilities, right? And, and to make sure that they, they don't have power. So for former NBA star Slava Medvedenko, comma, such determination to keep on playing, comma, in a building badly damaged by explosions and regularly plunged in the darkness, comma, is a sign of hope, right? And so again, you can just see how the writing gets chunked up into these, into these different sections, okay? So um, it, it's helpful to understand the distinction between a phrase and a clause. And again, a phrase, um, a phrase, um, you know, only has a subject. It'll have a subject or a verb. but not both. So this one, we got a subject, but there's no verb, right? Um, yeah, so it, it's important to know that distinction. What's a clause? What's a phrase? And the different kinds of phrases, different kind of clauses. But the important part is to really just make your writing better um, but, but it's important to spend time looking at these things and breaking them down. All right, so yesterday's class, we, we talked about assignment 30, and we got through most of it. So, again, we're talking about expressing information, information. And you're letting your readers understand information. And, and here's a really important uh, phrase to highlight, quickly and efficiently. So one of your jobs as a writer is to make things easy on your reader. You know, I if you've done your job, your job as a writer is to process the ideas, to do the research, to gather up the information, to figure it all out, and then to figure out the order you give it to the reader, uh, to figure out how you give it to the reader. You know, are you going to just use words? Are you going to use a combination of words and pictures? Are you going to use graphs? Um, do you have to explain your graph? Um, before you give them an illustration, should you kind of set it up? So you're making all kinds of decisions, and, and you're choosing how your words appear on the page. And so that's your job as a writer. Um, and, and, we, and we write with our words in our letters, but we also write by the visual elements that we, you know, that we give to people. And that's a really important part of being a writer. You're, you're designing a page. You're designing a document to give to somebody. And so we had a look at this Chiefs of Ontario map. And again, your job is to give it a title. Go back to my last class for a longer explanation on this one. You need to give a compass rose. I've given you an example of a compass rose, right? That that's what they're asking for in that in that assignment. And then we stopped on this one, right? And then wh what I mentioned was uh like here, let's draw This is a really bad drawing of Ontario. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, that's a really bad drawing of Ontario, but you get the idea. Um, I am from Sioux Lookout. We got Manitoba right here. Um, 
is Lake Superior. There's T Bay. And let's say I got a friend of mine over here in Ottawa. And I meet my new friend in Ottawa, and they say, oh, where are you from? And I say, oh, I'm from Sioux Lookout. And they say, oh, I've never heard of that. Or they say, oh, is that near Sault Ste. Marie? Which happens a lot. And I say, no, no, it's a different place. I'm from Sioux Lookout. And Sioux Lookout is halfway between Winnipeg and Thunder Bay. Um, but if I want to use directions, like north, south, I could say, you know, uh, Sioux Lookout is like 440 kilometers um, east of Winnipeg. And I'm like about, I don't know, I'm just guessing here, but about 400 kilometers northwest of T Bay. Right, so you want to give a landmark. That's what I would suggest doing. Give, give somebody like a reference point, right? So they don't know where Sioux Lookout is. They don't know where Bearskin Lake is. Um, so you got to kind of give them a reference, right? Um, so if you're from a northern community, um, like Bearskin Lake, for example, you might want to give your location in relation to, say, Sioux Lookout or Thunder Bay or Winnipeg um, or, like, give someone directions, but that's usually how you do that. You want to orientate somebody on the on the map, right? You want to say, well, are you familiar with this big thing? Well, I am 100 kilometers away from that thing, right? Okay, so in your course material for Unit 3, you will come across this bar graph. So remember, bar, this, is, this, is a, this is an example of a bar graph. Now, one thing I mentioned about the, uh, the bar graph is that it gives us um, multiple, multiple data sets. So, um, so in this case, we have um, Aboriginal, which is in the darker shaded of color, and we have non-Aboriginal people, which are in like the, the, the lighter gray. So you've got two two data points, right? For each category, right? So I have 0 to 19 years old, I have 20 to 64, and I have 65. And then I have, so for Aboriginal, there's actually three corresponding numbers, and for non-Aboriginals, I have uh, three, which correspond to the 1, 2, three, four, five, six. So I have like six datums or individual individual sets of information that I can uh, I can look up. And so according to this graph, approximately what percentage of the population over the age of 65 is indigenous? So if we go back to that, over 65 is going to be that category. And then we just got to follow it along and look at our axis on the left-hand side. That's where we find the percentages. According to the graph, approximately what percentage of the population under the age of 20 is indigenous? So under 20, that's going to be this category right here. Again, just find the corresponding category. And using the graph above to make two statements which compare the indigenous population to the non-indigenous population, an example of a comparative statement in this case would be more non-Indigenous people are between the ages of 20 and 64. Use words such as more and fewer. So there are more people than, there are more Aboriginal people in this category than there are in this category, right? Right, or you could use the most, right? Um, you could use more, uh, you could use more than, um, you know, um, you're doing a comparison, right? Uh, more than, less than.
Okay. So now we're on to assignment 31, journal entry, visuals. So the last several lessons you have done in this course have focused on visuals. Use this opportunity to describe in a paragraph containing six or seven sentences. Okay, so that's key, right? Always read the assignment guidelines. Six or seven sentences. What you think the use of visuals is all about and why we have spent some time on it. We know that they add to our understanding of material and also to make the material we are going through more interesting with some variety. In your paragraph, also include some examples of visuals used and where we often see them. So, we're going we're gonna to break this down into the five-step writing process that uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of using. And we, and we use the five-step process, so we're not just staring at a question or a prompt and wondering where to take it next. We know what to do, right? So it's a five-step process. And step one is we plan. Step two is we write. <laughs> Excuse me. Step three, we revise. In step four, we edit, and in step four, we publish or share what we did. So in this first step, planning, we're going to think about um, a list of at least five visual elements that you can write about. List general categories, photographs, graphs, symbols, and specific examples. So um, you might want to think about magazine covers, photos used in news reports, bar graphs, emojis. Uh, you know what? What other what other things have we talked about in this course? So that's that's it. So we're gonna we're gonna do some step one planning. So let's let's get out our, our trusty notebook, and we're doing our planning process, and we're trying to think of a list of visuals. And you might want to do it this way, right? So apologize for this. This microphone just will not stay still. Okay. Um, so we looked at um, symbols. And some of the symbols we talked about were emojis slash emoticons we looked at punctuation uh, we did like some examples of road signs flags um, some other visual elements we looked at one sec Sorry about that. That's the sound of my headphones scratching into my face here. Okay. We looked at um, graphs. And we looked at infographics. Infographics. Bar graphs. Uh, pie graphs, line graphs. Today I introduced the topic of, you know, big data visualization. Um, something else we looked at in this course are, you know, photographs and images. And then some visual elements. We 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 haven't really touched upon it too much, but we you know we've talked about um, you know typeface and font and uh, I'll say font size and color. 
And this is all like design. Okay, so I've got a list of symbols up on the page. So, um, sorry, a list of visuals, and they include symbols, graphs, uh, photographs, images, typeface. Um, and I would say that I've got about, you know, one, two, three, and, um, sorry, that's two. This is three. I'd say I got about four general categories that I could talk about. And later on in the process, you may want to think about your decision making and say, like, do I want to write about one of these categories and then break it down into several examples? Do I want to combine two of them? I don't think you should write about all four, but I think, you know, you've got some stuff to work with. So step two, you're going to write. So choose three things from your list that you think, uh, you think, that you think you, that you think you can write about without having to think too hard. So, so, you know, I'm, I think it's really important to do that, right? So, it's it's always good, I think, to just jot down a list of things, right? So when you're having a hard time getting started, um, sometimes uh, the best way to move forward is to is to not try to write, but just to um, jot things down in point form. So you don't have to write in full sentences. You don't have to spell things correctly. All you have to do is come up with a list of stuff that you could write about. And you could write about none of it all of it, maybe three out of 10, it doesn't matter, right? Just write your list. And then once you have that list in front of you, you can try to pick, you know, I, I said three, but that's just a starting point. But, you know, pick three or, you know, even one thing that you can write about that you can just write and not have to, not have to think too hard. And try to think of where you find these visuals and why they are there. Who put them there and for what purpose, okay? So... So that's really what this exercise is asking you about. So talk about some visuals we find. Um, so step one is just to identify them and to say, like, here's a visual, there's a visual. Um, but step two would be to be like, hey, why are they there? Who put them there? And for what purpose? You know, why, why did we put those things there? Why did we use them? Or why did someone use them in, in, their, in their writing? Okay, so this is step two. We're gonna we're gonna take uh, maybe three things here from our from our list here. So so I'm looking at my list and I'm gonna I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna what I'm gonna write about. I, I didn't put maps here. I lo I love looking at maps. So we we could have talked about that, but uh, uh, we didn't. Uh, photographs, images, typeface, font. Um, so I, I think I would go with the, uh, I would go with the, um, I'm thinking I'd go with the graphs and I, and I would look at, um, I, w I would look at the graphs and just see, um, you know, how, how we could do that. So let, let's just, let's just take that as an example. Okay. So, um. So let's, I'm going to write down a couple of, uh, you know, this is step two. And so I've chosen uh, graphs. And we could say, um, um, you know, graphs are useful. Um, because they give us a lot of information, um, with, you know, one visual. 
And so a tactic you might want to do for doing this assignment, you might want to do like a, a general statement. You might want to do a general statement like this one. And then you might want to do a specific sentence, right? Um, and say like the graphs found on the weather network. Uh, help me understand the climate in my town. Okay, and then may maybe I'll just... Uh, Pull an example of that up on the board, right? This, this is a, this is something I, I do all the time. Um, I like to uh, look at the weather network for Sioux Lookout and to get more information about it. So, if I if I go to the weather network and and I have a look. Um, and the weather network's a great example of you know they, they use a lot of they use a lot of combination of visual elements. We've got their logo up here, we've got the menu. Some people call this the hamburger icon because you've got the bun, the ingredients, and a bun. So, and that's sort of become the universal symbol for uh, a menu. If I click on it, I can see other stuff that I can I can click on. I've got the magnifying glass, which is, of course, the universal symbol for um, searching for something. I've got the the C for Celsius, the F. I've got the Canadian flag, which tells me I'm looking at this in Canadian English, but I could also do Canadian French, right? So um, all kinds of symbols and visual elements, right? So... Um, you know, and then actually just thinking about this, like I could even um, I could even write a paragraph about this one website. I, I could get really specific and I can say, you know, like, um, you know, thinking about visual elements, you know, uh, you know, you, you could have a look at one source, right? So you could look at, say, like the Weather Network or a magazine or a blog or Facebook or like an Instagram feed. Um, you know, how do they use a combination of images and text to convey information? But what I was getting at here is, um, is looking at like a graph, right? So... And once this page kicks in, uh, I'll show you, right? So, so that's one way of, of representing the data, right? So this is the, the monthly calendar, which shows us the weather averages, right? Um, so, of course, uh, these days have already happened. So I have the actual numbers. We have the forecast. And then two weeks after the forecast, you get the historical average, right? So I can see it in a calendar format. So the information is given to me in a calendar format, or I can go to graph format. And then once I switch to graph format, it is now, it, so it's giving me the same information, but it's giving it to me in a different way, right? And now you see, now it kind of like tells a story how it's dipping up and down, up and down, right? And we had that really, really cold spell um, from December 4th to the 10th where it got really cold in Sioux Lookout. And now it's starting to heat up. And you've got the average high, average low. So right now, we are way above average, but we're going down. We're going down, down, down. And we're going to be below average as we get closer to Christmas, right? So that just shows you 
um, the different ways that information can be expressed, right? And I can see it in a seven days. I can see it in 14 days. So lots of information being expressed in, uh, in different ways. So I'm going to stop that share and go back to my my lesson here. So, so that's good. So just by doing that, just by right, I, I didn't know where I was going to take that, and I and I, 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 I'm very careful when I plan out my lessons for for my students. But sometimes I like to leave things up to chance. So I didn't know where I was going to take this. I walked in blind, and I'm kind of, I'm surprised, and I'm happy with where it went. So, um, the weather network is kind of like the breakthrough here. That's that's what I'm going to latch on to, right? Step three, revise. Review what you wrote in step two. Can you find a way to connect these visuals? So yes, I can. Uh, is there a general theme that will help you write an opening sentence? So sure, there is. So, and I'm going to use that weather network as my as my. Um, that's going to be my opening. That's going to be like my opening. Uh, that's going to be like my hook, my my theme. It's gonna it's gonna keep me going here. So, so. Step three. So remember, revision is big picture. It's the big picture. Revision is how we organize um, our, our documents, right? Our documents our assignments, right? You know, this is like paragraph order and more specifically, especially for this case, it is um, the main idea, right? And so my, so I could say, for example, um, The Weather Network um, app, because I use the app a lot, um, but I also use the website. So the Weather Network app and website um, provide uh, many, uh, I don't know, useful visuals. The Weather Network app and website provide many useful visuals that, I don't know, teach us, educate us, what's the right word here, that show us, that, um, I don't know, that demonstrate, I might change that word, I don't know, I'm going to find the right verb, that demonstrate the climate um, of my hometown. Okay, so that's good. So I've got a uh I've got a I've got an opening sentence and that and then once I had that opening sentence, then it's really easy for me to to take it from there, right? So my opening sentence will be about the weather network and how they have many useful visuals that demonstrate the climate of my hometown. Uh then I might say like for example, they have um, a chart that shows me the historical averages, uh, highs and lows for the month of December. Um, I could talk about the website. I could talk about. Um, I I could. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now that I have that opening sentence, what I might want to do is I might want to now. Use step three as a, as a chance to do some outlining, right? So now I can do some outlining. Sentence one is going to be uh, weather network, right? Uh, step two could be um, home page.
homepage description where I just describe the homepage of the weather network and the different visuals that are on it. Uh, sentence three could be um, could be um, could be a specific description of these elements. I'll say sentences four and five could be, um, remember we were talking about the, um, uh, the chart of historical averages. And then sentences six and seven will be my conclusion. All right, so there we go. So I've got a way to organize my thoughts, and 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 that's and that's really helpful for your reader, okay? To, to organize your thoughts in a way that um, they know what you're talking about. You've got a general idea, and it keeps the reader kind of flowing through. So if you just present like a list of random visuals and you don't find a way to connect them, that makes for less powerful writing, less cohesive writing, less connected writing. You want your writing to have like some energy to it, and it's got some flow to it. So good writing is often referred to as writing that has flow to it, and it has a, a, a good energy to it, and it kind of reads off the page, it jumps off the page, it flows off the page. You often hear descriptions like that for when we talk about good writing. And when things jump off the page, when they just flow off the page, they do that when the writer has put thought into it and when the writer has organized it. And again, that, that's, that is your main job as a writer. Is to, you're not just giving your reader or you're, you're not just giving your audience information. You're giving them information in a way that's thoughtful and... Um, you know, most kinds of writing, you're telling a story. There's a reason for why you've ordered it. You know, point A, point B, right? It's 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 telling a story. It's got a beginning. It's got you know, it's got a beginning. It's got a middle, and it's got an end, right? One, two, three. And then, of course, uh, we don't have time for this, but when when we come back next week, we're going to jump into talking about subject audience and purpose so I'll, I'll save this for next week but I'll make one final point here um, when I go back to my assignment here right so um, so we looked at step one planning we did some writing we did some revising and then once you have your your paragraph the way you want it then you want to go into the editing practice and remember, the editing practice is where you look at um, editing is, is word choice. Editing is where we talk about punctuation. Editing is looking at grammar, the rules of writing, uh, word choice, punctuation, grammar. Editing is adding and cutting words, right? So revising is big picture stuff. Editing is, is little picture stuff. And I really want to recommend that you try the editing techniques that I, I have been pushing in this course because I've used them for years and they're really effective. So uh, read your work out loud. Write it down, type it up, and then actually read it out loud to yourself. Uh, bonus points for recording yourself into a microphone or your cell phone or whatever and playing it back for yourself. Um, technique number two, give it to somebody else. Make them read it and make them give you some feedback. Okay. Uh, and then technique three that we talked about was getting a different colored pen or a highlighter and going over your work and um, using a different colored pen. Um, and really at the heart of all this is just putting down a first version and not worrying about it being perfect and then just through little little changes, through little edits, 
making that thing really shine, okay? So good luck with that. We'll see you next week where we'll, we'll dive completely into Unit 3. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.